Good afternoon, people of God. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We're about to start this funeral service. And it's going to be a very brief one. Start the procession, please. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. May we talk for the procession. Sanki 1036, on page 3 of the program for our procession. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be a dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at a later day upon the earth. And though after my skin one destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The thought stands out. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I would have told you. I will go and prepare a place for you. The fourth stanza.
let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. The fifth and the last stanza. For our opening, we shall seek from ancient and modern number 467 on the same page. The special psalm for this funeral service is Psalm number 90.
be seated. All again. May we now call upon Ayotunde Tassie Amadi to take the only scripture reading. Is he around? Let's chapter 15, verse 50 to 58. Now, this I say, brethren. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall, not all, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always bounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Sanki, Sanki 879, for first, the first Sansas and the second for the reading of the biography by Nimi Dinkwa Briggs. Thereafter, we will take the last stanza for the brief address. Sanki 879.
seated. May we now call upon Nimi Dinkpa Briggs to take the biography. By Inanda, Tasie Amadi, and the Priye Briggs. Are they here? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will be taking my father's biography this afternoon. My name is Kika Tasie Amadi. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Indeed, this can be said about Professor Emeritus Jimmy Redding at Tobin Briggs, who was born on the 22nd of February, 1944, and passed on on the 10th of April, 2023. News of his sudden demise, news of the sudden demise of a dear person often makes one feel as if left stranded with an innate conversation that will never get to be heard. This is the general feeling of all those who heard of Nimi's demise. The man was a delight, and his life showed rare talent, laced with outstanding feats, laurels and accolades that distinguished him. Many clear qualities defined Nimi Briggs some of which were discipline, consistency, diligence, determination, integrity, and the fear of God. These qualities played out in his choice of career, decision-making, and relationships with people. Nimisere Dinkpa Tobin Briggs was born on February 22, 1944, in Port Harcourt, River State. His father, Bishop Dinkpa Tobin Briggs, was the fifth son of Da Tobin Daike Tolumari Briggs. His mother, Madam Esther Victor Will Telema Harry, was the third daughter of Pa William Young Briggs. She was a woman who knew the worth of education and recognized the potential in her son and relentlessly nurtured this potential to fruition. Nimi grew up as any other child in a body affluence, but living a moderate life. His education, academic career was a remarkable string of distinctions and honors. Tiemoni School in Abonima in 1949 where he then proceeded to the Baptist High School in Port Harcourt, and then on to the prestigious Government College in Mwahia. Following that, he then went on to the University of Lagos. It is worthy to note that all these institutions Nimi attended, he finished with distinguished honors in each of them, and that after his sojourn in Baptist High School, every other form of education that Nimi Sohere Dinkwa Briggs undertook was funded by one form of scholarship or the other. He, in gaining admission to the university, was admitted to both the universities of Ibadan and Lagos, but chose to study medicine at the University of Lagos. In June 1969, he graduated from the University of Lagos, again earning various accolades, a distinction in obstetrics and gynecology, overall best in final MBBS examination in surgery, and the award of the gold medal prize as best student in pediatrics. Again, Nimi's um, graduation from the University of Lagos was followed with a string of accolades. His career. He also had a long and fulfilling career, which spanned over five decades, during which period he undertook roles spanning memberships of professional bodies to chairing of these bodies. Of note, some of these roles in which Nimi played a prominent role where some of these some of the prominent roles that he played during his lifetime were the chairman of various institutions boards foundations and committees some of which being the federal government universities unions renegotiation team from 7th march 2022 till his passing the chairman committee of pro chancellors from the 20th of september till his passing the pro chancellor and chairman of council alex ekweme federal university from 18th May 2020 till his passing. He was the pioneer pro-chancellor and chairman of council for the Bielsa University of Medical Sciences 
and he was a member of the Committee of Pro-Chancellors of state-owned universities in Nigeria from 2019 till his passing. He was also the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of Council for the Federal University Lokoja, Nigeria from February 2016 till 2020. He was the Chairman Board of Sports Institute, University of Port Harcourt from March 2013 to his passing. He was the Chairman Board of University of Port Harcourt Foundation from 2012 till his passing. He was the chairman of the Board of Management, University of Benin Teaching Hospital from February 20, 2009 till March 2011. He was the chairman of the National Universities Commission Institutional Accreditation Team to the University of Ibadan from November till December 2011. He was the chairman of the River State Economic Advisory Council from November 2007 to May 2015. He was the chairman River State Independent Electoral Commission from 2007 to 2011. He was the chairman River State Community Foundation. He was the chairman board of National Hospital Abuja from 2006 to 2007. He was the chairman of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Federal Universities from 2004 to 2005. And he was the chairman Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities from 2004 to 2005. He was also a member of the Strategy Advisory Committee of the National Universities Commission, which was set up to assist the NUC urgently revitalize the Nigerian university system. At the time of his passing, Professor Emeritus Nimi Briggs, as a member of this organization, was in the process of revising the curricula of various university courses, especially those related to medicine, which was finalized and presented to the federal government of Nigeria in May 2023. He was, a, he was a prolific external examiner and evaluator, examining in all but I think two of the Nigerian universities, also examining in various tertiary institutions in Africa, including the West African College of Surgeons. He was also a prolific writer, writing numerous publications, over, um, publishing books, articles, workshop conference papers, technical reports, and a host of other um, publications. Mr. Redding Fabrics in his lifetime also had a string of accolades that lined his um, study shelf. Amongst this was the Order of the Niger Delta that was conferred on him by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A topical period in Nimi Briggs' life, as most of us will know, was his time as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt. On the 10th of July 2000, he was appointed Vice Chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt prior to which he had served in an acting capacity on two previous occasions. His time as Vice Chancellor of this institution mark, was marked with an unparalleled drive for excellence, hard work, and integrity. One of such occasions where his drive propelled the university to hitherto unattained heights was the hosting of the 2004 Nougat Games. From a situation where there was a total lack of funds for hosting the Games, the Nimibrix led committee convinced various sectors of society and stakeholders raising enough funds to build an Olympic standard swimming pool, a world-class stadium with tartan tracks, and a games village which eventually metamorphosized into what is today known as the University of Port Harcourt Sports Institute, Institute, introducing athletes known throughout the country as being among the best in their respective fields. It was also a pivotal time for him, as this marked the turning point in his career from medical professional to astute administrator. From taking on the helm of what was considered a sinking ship in January 1995, when he first acted as acting vice chancellor, he turned the ship around. And by the end of his tenure as the vice chancellor, the institution had attained pride of place as one of the universities of choice in Nigeria. In 1999, before Nimi became vice chancellor of the university, the institution was ranked 25th amongst 36 federal and state universities by the National Universities Commission, the NUC based on the quality of academic programs. However, following the November 2002 accreditation, the university was ranked, and after, we, after Nimi serving for just two years as its vice chancellor, the university was ranked the first amongst all the universities, along with the University of Agriculture, Abiy Okuta. This period of his life was the inspiration for the book he wrote at the end of his tenure as vice chancellor, which he titled, turning the tide. He means community and social life. Outside his academic achievements, he was also, 
He was also a central pillar in society. He was a father to all he interacted with, treating everyone with respect and dignity. Always smartly dressed, a man of the microphone who never lacked the words to say. Yumi was constantly sought after as chairman of every type of occasion, from weddings all the way to funerals. His weekends were often a blow of activities over which he was presiding, and his car and room, a graveyard for the million and one programs from these occasions for, which, for some reason which he never threw away. In 2002, as an elder statesman and in his capacity as the chairman committee of pro-chancellors, Nimi led the negotiation on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria, successfully bringing the eight-month impasse between the Academic Staff Union of Universities and the federal government to an end. In his lifetime, he also served as a member of the River State Elders Forum, where he again applied himself, bringing positive changes to the people and communities in the state. An example of this was during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Nimi, as he had always done, showed up as a pillar of the Abonima Society. He constituted a high-powered and effective committee that mobilized and raised funds home and abroad to procure enough food, drugs, and sanitizing materials. The committee also ensured effective distribution of these palliatives to Abonima and its surrounding communities. In his desire to further serve his home community, Nimi was in the process of seeking a chieftaincy title of the late Young Briggs. Even in seemingly mundane issues such as the provision of electricity, Nimi Brick showed up to the Amadi Flats community where he lived to solve the problem of incessant power failure. He donated an entire transformer to the area. The Nepa staff knew him as the man who dwelt in light. As it was said, with him around, there could be no darkness. His passion for exercise and healthy living inspired many around him, young, elderly, to live healthier lives. He was married to his alter ego. Lady Data Nimi Briggs, Nee Christopher Tom Ogi, his wife of 51 years, whom he had promised, assuming there is a reincarnation, that he will marry again and again. Their marriage was instituted in March 1972, where they carried out the highest form of the Calabari traditional marriage, the year ceremony. Lady Data Briggs was a strong pillar by the side of her husband, and both had total respect for each other. Their union is blessed with three children, one son and two daughters, Nina, Kika, and Boma, and five grandchildren. Professor Emeritus Nimi Briggs' devotion to Lady Dart Briggs was rivaled only by his attachment to his children and grandchildren. As a caring husband and loving father, he raised his family in the culture of service to others. The status of his family is a pointer that his was a life devoted to the service of God and humanity. He was a Christian who lived an upright and fair life. He believed that his existence and accomplishments in life were traceable to one source, God. He started his Christian life as a bell ringer in St. Paul's Yemoni Lutheran Church, Abonima, where we are worshipping today. During his time in the University of Port Harcourt, he worshipped at Our Saviour's Chapel and upon leaving the university at King's Chapel Bishop's Court in Old GRA, Port Harcourt. His dedication to the Christian faith led to his investiture as a Knight of St. Christopher in 2004. In 2014, Professor Emeritus Nimi Briggs published a book on his birthday entitled Nimi Briggs at 70, Selected Writings and Addresses, 2006 to 2013, where he chronicled his footprints in 667 fascinating pages. His narrative demonstrated the essence of a true biography, shown of self-adulation, and in it, there was a lesson for every age. It was Nimi's non dimittis reminiscent of the Song of Simeon in Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32 used as a canticle in Christian mythology. At 70, he had achieved that much, reaching the pinnacle of his prof profession. So what else? Hippocrates, acknowledged father of medicine, had in 406 BC defended Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs in one of his long, famous aphorisms, in which he exclaimed, Ars longa vita brevis. Art is long, life is short a sentiment redolent of Nimi Briggs' own observation that excellence lasts forever. Following a brief illness, Nimi Briggs passed early hours of Easter Monday, April 10, 2023, in the United Kingdom. He is greatly missed, but the Holy Spirit will bring solace to his family and all who knew him. We remain thankful for his legacy left to all, especially to future generations, to emulate. 
He has indeed finished the race and finished strong. May his gentle soul continue to rest in perfect peace. Amen. Adieu, Prof. the Great. Sleep and take thy rest. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, and a host of relatives. Thank you. The last stanza of Psalm 879 for the brief address. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us together this afternoon to pay our last tribute to your servant, whom you sent into this world, through whom you, you made the needs of so many, and also through whom a lot of people acquired knowledge. Our brother, our husband, our father, our dear friend, Professor Emeritus, Mimi Zohere Dingba, to be in bricks. Lord, at this time, we are about to hear your word, however brief it will be. May that your word, which is the truth, sanctify us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. May be seated. I want to welcome our king, the Abayanabo of Abonima, and the four paramount heads, and all the council of chiefs. I want to welcome you. So, I want to welcome. All those who have come to join us in saying farewell to our dear brother, our prof, our friend, our father, grandfather, a wonderful man, a gentleman. Always smiling, always peaceful, always ready to go extra mile with you in order to help you out. It has not been easy for both the family, the community. And the St. Paul C.M. Morning Lutheran Cathedral.
So we want to make things as brief as possible so that we can go back and relax in our various homes. We've heard about his birth, his achievement academically, and his contributions into the society. Now we will go home with the word of God as found recorded in Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 6, 7, and 8. Second Timothy chapter four verses six through eight is the text for our brief address. The Apostle Paul writing to his son Timothy says, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Dearly beloved in Christ Jesus. The theme for this brief message is hearing what is stated here by the Apostle Paul to his son. The theme will be the song of triumph by a dying Christian. The song of triumph by a dying Christian. The song has four stanzas. The first stanza says, I have fought a good fight. Paul indeed fought a good fight. With confidence, he mentioned it. Because he knew that in that fight, he got victory through Jesus Christ. Our brother, professor, came into this world and he was born into a Christian family. Growing up, he was baptized into the Christian faith. And from then, he knew that he would be facing battle because life is war. Life is what? Life is what? War. Life is war. So, he too started his own battle. But he followed the footsteps of his parents. Our father, Bishop Dito Bin Briggs, and his mother, our wonderful Christian mother, Esther Harry. So I must say that he too fought a good fight. And he won the battle. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The second stanza of the Christian song says, I have finished my cause. 
This is one thing a lot of people don't want to realize. You are not here on earth by accident. You are here for a mission. You have a cause. And that mission you are expected to accomplish. You are not here. You have seen the world. Maybe your parents left one or two naira for you to enjoy. So you start to rock a wula, job, up and that. No! You are here for a purpose. Whether man or woman, boy or girl, they are here for a purpose, a mission. And you are expected to finish that mission, to accomplish that mission. Paul, upon all that he did to the church, when Jesus Christ met him on his way to Damascus, in order to prosecute more Christians, Christ turned him around. And since then, he started defending the faith and also winning souls for Christ. A persecutor turning around to becoming a winner for that same cause he was persecuted. Great. Is our God. Our brother, Professor, coming up to age, he came to realize that he was here for a purpose. And that purpose, that cause, that was set before him would make him to reach out to so many people to interact with so many people to impact knowledge to so many people to heal so many people as a gynecologist we cannot count how many women that he saved how many women that he helped to survive? How many people that the devil wanted to snatch out of this world suddenly and through prayers, the Lord helped him in order to help them. Can we count them? They cannot. And very many other things that he did. He knew he was here for a cause. And he followed the cause. And by the grace of God, before he left, whether he was able to say it out verbally or not, within him, he made this statement and sang this song, I have finished my cause. What about you and I? Have we come to realize that we are not here by accident? And we are not here for a child's play. We are here for a purpose. We are here for a mission. And those of us that have come to realize that, do you know that you cannot do without God helping you? And that's why you need to come closer to your God. You need to come closer to Jesus Christ. You have to. Because he says, without me, he can do nothing. It's that same Jesus, that same God that helped our prophet to succeed and accomplished his mission. So that day he sang that song, I have accomplished my mission. I have finished my course. The third stanza of the Christian, a dying Christian song of triumph says, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. As I told you earlier, I was born into a Christian family. 
And as a child, he was brought to the knowledge of his Savior, Jesus Christ. And he remained, he remained faithful to his God unto the end. Praise the Lord. But all the books he read, written by atheists in the field that he chose, that God gave him, maybe, to acquire knowledge, and some other philosophical books, it did not affect his faith. No way. Rather, it strengthened him to remain a faithful Christian to the end. Praise the Lord. Yes, he kept the faith. And wherever he, he went, first and foremost, is for him to go closer to the church where he can go and worship his God. He loved God, loved the things of God, and helped the propagation of the gospel. And helped the propagation of the gospel. In everywhere, every place, both abroad, here, at home. He loved Jesus. And Jesus loved him too. He loved the things of God. And he supported the progress of the church. He defended the Christian faith. He defended the Christian faith. So as the Apostle Paul said that he kept the faith, our prof, before he gave up, also with full assurance sang the song which is the third stanza which says I have kept the faith. How faithful are you to your God? How faithful are you to Jesus Christ if you are a born again? How faithful are you with the word of God or through the word of God? We carry Bible, we go to church, we hear the preacher preach and we just leave it there and go and continue looking for money, acquiring this, acquiring that. They are good. Riches are good, but God first. That's why our Savior says, seek ye first. What? What? And it's a... And then every other thing... Okay. Seek ye first. So we need to understand one thing. God first. Let God first be first in our in our lives. Because without him we can do nothing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. You belong to God. So you must know him. You must know him. Because it's time for you to leave this world. As our professor has done, that is time for you to leave this world. Nobody, whether you live up to 200 years, one day you will go. Because the Ecclesiastes clearly tells us in, in the, the third chapter, there is time for everything. Time to be born and time to... Bye, you will depart. Because we have no abiding city here. Yes. There is a home. But between the time of birth and time of time to depart, one thing is required of you. One thing. Remember now thy in the days of thy youth means now that you are you are healthy, your senses are working, your physics are working. Now because time will come to become Dumb. I don't pray for that for you. But you cannot hear the gospel anymore. Time will come when the senses can no longer function properly. When you cannot even remember your name. 
when they will ask you, just like our one of our old uh, old mothers, grandmothers, uh, he had nothing to do with the church, nothing, until when the day came, they called a pastor to go and uh, <laughs> preach to her so that she can be baptized, uh, since she still has uh, life in her. So they brought the preacher, and the, the man asked her. Uh, mother, do you know who is Jesus Christ? She asked him, from which compound of the community? Yes, from which compound? If it were to be, I would tell her, from five years compound, because that's where I come from. Don't wait till then. Now, now is the time to surrender your life to Christ. Yes, to seek the kingdom of God. So one day you will go and you should know where you are going. Yes. You should know where you are going. Don't just claim I'm a church goer Sunday, Sunday, we go this and that. No! Be faithful to your God. Embrace Jesus. Cleave to him and remain faithful to him. Yes. He is the only also, and finisher of our faith. Cling to him. Be prayerful. And commit your ways unto him. And he will do what? He will direct your path. Whatever you need, he will give it to you. But have him first. If you don't have Jesus, Whatever degree, whatever position, what, whoever you are, you are nothing. If you don't have Jesus, because he's the savior of the world, our prop click to him, just like his parents. Yes, and the entire family. And it is Jesus that helped him out. For him to make it in life. For him to make it in life. A peace lover. A peace lover. A true Christian. An upright man. A man with policy. If he says this, he, remain, he will keep to it. Oh yes. And he will expect you to keep to it. There was this committee that was set up to look into the eternal matters of Abodima, which he too was a member. As busy as he was at that time, the moment I called him and said, Look, oh, we are meeting in so so place at so so time, he will be there before even me. Prof was a lover of, of hymns, in fact, Christian music, and he loves praising God. Especially when the choir, the cathedral choir, wants to do their concert or their cantata and they invite him. He'll be here before the choir choristers will come to make arrangements. A timekeeper. Prof touched so many lives. Both home and abroad. There are so many people crying being grieved of his departure. But one thing is certain. An elect, a saint of our time, an upright man of our time, a man full of love towards mankind, has returned to his maker. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. He touched lives. Very simple in his ways, in the, in the way he does his things. Very simple. <laughs> Always smiling whenever he sees you. Always keeping to time. Always
was ready to go extra mile. Prof. Dynamo. Now the fourth stanzas of that hymn of the dying Christian says, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Praise the Lord. I know. After your job, your work, and everything, by the grace of God, you go into retirement. And the government, the authorities, will give you your reward. Maybe your colleagues too can also give you an award, a word of excellence, a word of appreciation. Or maybe your gratuity, your pension, as it used to be. So also, after your life here on earth, there is a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, when Jesus, the righteous judge himself, will say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And will give you your reward. Say the reward of every man, every woman is with me. Behold, I come quickly. And I will give to each and every one your reward. So, what will be your reward? Paul says, a crown of righteousness awaits him. And that crown, yours, is also there if you love Jesus and his appearing. What will be your reward after your life here on earth? What will be your reward? Also consider that. And that's why the preacher man says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his uh, commandment. Because every deed, whether be, it be good or evil, whether done secretly or openly, there is a judgment and a reward. Let us try to make heaven by living a righteous life, a righteous life, an upright life. Let us fear God in all our dealings. Let us touch lives in all our dealings. Let us remain faithful to our God. Prof has finished his own and is going with songs and singing and joy and gladness on his heart because he has done well. Oh yes. What about you? And what about me? Let us do what is right. Look at our country, how it is. Because we don't have the fear of God. A country blessed blessed with mineral resources in the midst of plenty we are starving yes where there is much water soup is entering into our eyes so many things are happening because we don't have the fear of God we don't love God because we prefer things of this world than any other thing than, than, than even if it God, look at what is happening to us. You may be happy because maybe you have a source where one or two things are coming and they are, you feel you are comfortable. You are not comfortable. Oh, yes. Or let me say it would have been better than what you think is better for you. Because the best is there for us. So let us fear God, Nigerians. Yes, let us fear God. And live a righteous life. Let us shun every kind, every type of sin and corruption and everything. And remain faithful to our God. You will see how our country will change for the better. Our prof and I had a discussion. This year, 
before the end of this year, we were to raise funds. Yes. Now, some of you, I know you have noticed the dropping from the roof. The church will be 100 years old. The building will be 100 years old in July. This July will make it 100 years old. So, those of you in the civil engineering and something, you, you can tell that the, the, the structure has started to show some sign of uh, aging. So, now that we are here, it is a call from God. Assess the cathedral, let us maintain it. The roof is leaking. Even if you look at the, uh, the tower there, the glasses and everything, you know, they are. So, please help us because we made an arrangement. He would have been the person to invite you so that you can come and help him, join him to raise funds for the maintenance of the cathedral building. So now that he's gone, I know you're all children of God. The Spirit of God is in you and you want to help to assist this building, an edifice, an inheritance from our forefathers. We will not let it fall down. Let us help the cathedral. May God help you as you think about it and decide on what to do. As you are here, the second name for this cathedral is the Temple of the New Covenant. And as you are here, if you have any problem, any challenge, because this is where Bonma people, all the big men you've heard and those that are still existing, this is where their blessing are. I'm proud of that. So now that you are here, challenge God here and see if God will not bless you as he blessed the people of Abodima. Oh yes. He hears and he answers prayers. So may God bless you as you have come. And may the honor you have given to our prop not in death but now that you are living may honor be a portion. May God's blessings be a portion. May one or never depart from your house or from your family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Academically, may you prosper. Amen. Spiritually, may you prosper. Amen. I know our country will prosper. Amen. And all that we have seen, the evil that we have seen, will be a thing of the past. May God help us and bless us. May the gentle soul of our prof. My brother, I call it my brother, because we have the same father, but uh, different mothers. The same father, his father happens to be my father spiritually. He made me what I am today. And I'm just in, in, in the shoes of his father. That's how I say, I regard him as my brother, my single brother. A wonderful man. May your soul rest in the bosom. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Pray for River State. Pray for Nigeria. Pray for the family, the wife and the children, the entire family of our prophet. So, for the wonderful, gracious, and merciful God. Continue to bless Nigeria. Now as if we don't know where we are going, let him show us the way. Let him bless the country. We are expecting new government. Let there be peace. Let there be unity. And let there be progress. Strike actions are already going on and more have been threatened. We need peace, unity, mostly the fear of God. Pray for our state. Thank God for our governor, the deputy, and those who are in authority now that they are leaving and handing over to a new, gov a new government. We thank them and may God bless them. And may God also direct 
the new government that is coming, for the progress, unity of our state. We pray for our, our dearly beloved wife, of our prof lady Nata, and the children. The God continue to console them, to comfort them. And you that is here, also commit yourself and everything belonging to you, your family, into the mighty hands of God. You have come from far and near, and you are about to return to your various destinations. May God guide and protect you and grant you all joining messages. But at the end, his name alone will be glorified. This is our prayer, and with full confidence that he has heard us, because we have prayed through his only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. Go in peace. heartily welcome our Deputy Governor, Our Excellency Dr. Mrs. Epal Bobanigo. You are welcome, ma. You and your entourage. You are welcome. And also, the Deputy Governor elect is also here, Professor Ngozi Odo. Ma, you are welcome. At the appropriate time, we'll also recognize all the dignitaries that are here. That uh, in the name of Jesus, I welcome you all. We shall take some performances from different choirs. First of all, the primate family of the Fellowship of Lutheran Congregation, Nigeria, worldwide. Asian and modern. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Blessing Fine Face. Grandma, Grandma Nengia Idaria. We're here to sing to the glory of God and also to encourage you to keep your faith in God and God alone. We love you.
Mary's Chapel Choir, Bishop Scott, Watercourt.
the great magnificent choir.
of his favorites. And that's why we are singing it for him. May we rise, please. For our closing, we shall seek from Asian and Modern number 443. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving. 
Father, we are here because of the departure of your son. Merciful Lord, we thank you for this service. Father, we thank you for the word that you have heard. Father, we thank you for the traveling mercies accorded us to come and hoping and believing in faith that we take us back home safely. Merciful Lord, we thank you for the life of your son that has departed. Really, indeed, we missed him. Merciful Lord, we commit his family, his nuclear family, friends and well-wishers, the academia in particular. Merciful Lord, we give you praise. Merciful Lord, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. Merciful Lord, we commit our state, River State. We commit our nation, Nigeria. We commit everybody all into your hand. Especially at this time, we are going into another new government. Merciful Lord, we thank you for plans that are made on ground or the swearing in at the national up to the state. Merciful Lord, we pray for peaceful transition from one government to another and pray that it is well with Nigeria and our state in the name of Jesus. Amen. Merciful Lord, we are about closing the service. And so, Heavenly Father, we commit the last section of the service, which is interment. Merciful Lord, as we go to entire yes or no God, let his soul rest in peace. Amen. Of course, you have reminded us that you are the way, the truth, and the light. Nobody comes to the Father except through you, O oh God. And so I pray, O oh God, that Father, your Son will rest in peace. Amen. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Father, we thank you. Because you will do more than we have expected to do. In the name of God, the Father. In the name of God, the Son, and the name of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we all rise for the solemn tribute, death marching so, no movement.
with your hands here. Let's applaud for the magnificent choir of the cathedral. Thank you so very much. I've just been informed that some of you, your flight is about taking off. I don't know. But uh, we have so many wonderful, beautiful dignitaries, from, even from the federal here present. Our deputy governor, of course, is here on dual capacity. He is our mother, our daughter, and also representing the executive governor, wonderful governor of River State. <laughs> Mama, you are welcome. Ibote Baningo, Aloa, Amni Boma. And now, Maki Senate, Mueta, and I would. Hey, I'm not Bomas Makera Bray. I'm not the Inas Me, Mete Aloa. Then we also have the deputy governor elect who is here with our professor, our mother, Professor Ngozi Odo, is here. Welcome, uh, our mother. God bless you. And uh, we also have our king, of course. I've recognized him and welcome him as well. Wonderful king that God gave to Abonima and Calabari. Our king, welcome, sir. And his wife, our queen, she's here too. She's here. Our queen, Ibote Aloha. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, let's go to the clergy. We have our Archbishop, Dr. D.B. Kaladokpo, the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, River State, is here with me. Our son is from Akukuto local government, oh, not from another place. And he was a cross bearer, a chorister here in this cathedral. Oh. Before, huh? Not be so. Uh -huh, no. Before African Church took him. Today is an archbishop representing the Rivers Province, right? Uh huh. A hand of applause for him. He's here with us. And we have so many, we have so many bishops here and uh, clergymen because of time. You are all welcome. God bless you as you have come to join us to honor our father. And we have uh, the chairman of Agugutu local government area is also here with us, who is our host, the government level. Honorable Roland Sekibo is here with us. And some of his counselors are also here. We have uh, His Royal Majesty Sir uh, uh, Sergeant Chidi Awusi, DSSRS, Newell Emoa, the 13th, Allah the 4th. Paramount ruler of Emoha Kingdom and his wife, they are here. <laughs> Very sir. Your Majesty, where are you there? Anabasia, where are the goalkeeper? Huh? Hallelujah. Uh -huh. After I go, come on, maybe we have just one minute only, one go. We also have our son, our son, the secretary to the state government, Dr. Tami Wenike Danagogo, is here with us. Tami, you are welcome. These pillars you are seeing is the one that sponsored the marbling of it. He put the marbles on all the pillars. And also the stained glass. We did it in memory of his uh, mother. 
And we have our, our fathers who are here, the paramount rulers of this community who are working tirelessly with the king to see that there is peace and progress in the community. The head of Oruwa House is here. The head of Otaji House is here. The head of Iju Jack House is also here. And we have uh, the chiefs, high chiefs representing the, the other uh, seven paramount uh, compounds. But especially, we want to recognize our father, our father, His Highness Antonio Wildawa is here, the head of the head of Black Duke House of Abonima is here. You are welcome, sir. Then in the government level, sorry, the names uh, they are not mine and they are not from Galabari, some of them, so uh, it will be so difficult to mention them, but uh, we recognize all of you. We have the federal government delegation, the chairman, committee of pro-chancellor, federal university of Waziri Bashiru Dalhatu. Waziri Bashiru Dalhatu. Am I right? Okay, he's here. And we have Professor Ochefu. He's here, Secretary General, Committee of Vice Chancellors and Committee of Pro Chancellors of Federal Universities. He's also here. You are welcome. We have Ambassador God knows Bolade. Igali, Pro Chancellor of Federal University, Akure. And we have architect Lawrence Mbali, Pro Chancellor of Federal University, Wukari Jagarabi. And we have a Pro Chancellor of Uniport. <laughs> 